Do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? It's not even a question. <laughs> Dr. David Sinclair is a genetics professor at Harvard who finally found the golden key to living a 100-year-long life, reducing inflammation. Today, he will reveal and solve the seven alarming sources of inflammation, number one being the most shocking of them all. If inflammation is going up too fast, that's basically your clock You're is aging. accelerated. Yeah. There are so many risk factors you probably don't even realize are causing inflammation. For example, eating the majority of daily food after 5 p.m., not taking enough or the right kind of supplements and vitamins and even being selfish and pessimistic. But how on earth can you bring your inflammation under control to live past 100 years? Keep watching till the end, because Dr. Sinclair will teach you how to prevent and solve each of the seven inflammation sources one by one. A groundbreaking research study was recently conducted on 1,500 Japanese individuals, which included centenarians, supercentenarians, centenarian offspring and spouses, and people between the ages of 85 and 99. This research discovered that after age, inflammation is the strongest predictor for mortality, vitality, and brain health. So when you talk to a centenarian and say, did you used to get sick? They say, can't remember last time I got sick. Remember, Inflammation is in our control, which means that you can choose if you want to live a long life. There is no law that says we must age. Remember that. So how do you live over 100 years? By recognizing, understanding, and avoiding the seven sources of inflammation. Number seven, heavy evening eating. According to studies, if you can find yourself eating more than a third of your daily calories after 5 p.m., you may need to change your eating schedule. Eating heavily during the evenings increases inflammation in your body. So reduce the amount of food you eat after 5 p.m. and increase the amount of food you eat before 5 p.m. Unless you choose intermittent fasting and have all your daily food within an eight-hour window, remember, Eating too much has never made anyone healthier. But overeating and being obese is going to massively turn up inflammation. Wow. Inflammation is a key driver of at least 30% of all mental health related diseases, including depression and anxiety. A high inflammation and CRP level can lead to a greater risk of depression and anxiety. The World Health Organization ranks chronic inflammatory disease as the greatest threat to human health. Aim to keep your CRP level below three to prevent depression and anxiety. And all it takes are some longevity lifestyle changes that Dr. Sinclair shares. Number six, inflammatory foods like sugar, fried food, seed oils, donuts, and white bread increase inflammation in your body. Instead, you can follow one of these seven plant-based diets that are anti-inflammatory and anti-aging. These include, for example, Mediterranean diet, Okinawan diet, intermittent fasting, or an entirely vegan diet. For Dr. Sinclair, a vegan diet has been the most anti-aging. I went back another two years in my biological age just in a couple of months after switching to that diet. He and another renowned longevity doctor Esselstyn Caldwell recommend foods like nuts and seeds, beans and peas, and green leafy vegetables. What green leafy vegetables? Bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collards, collard green peas, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, and arugula, and I'm out of breath. The key is to make sure you're getting the most nutrients out of your meal. We, we focus on legumes and those plants that have high protein content and nutrition. These foods contain phytonutrients that fight off free radicals in your body, which cause oxidative stress and aging of cells. This brings us to Dr. Sinclair's next source of inflammation you need to avoid, lack of micronutrients. Lack of micronutrients can increase chronic inflammation. So to achieve longevity, start taking micronutrients regularly. In a study, people with increased inflammation and poor metabolic health were given multivitamins. These multivitamins decreased their CRP and inflammation levels. Also, markers like insulin started to go down. 
One of the vital supplements for Dr. Sinclair is resveratrol. The, the one chemical that I take every day is resveratrol, which is the red wine chemical, um, and that comes from grapes. And uh, so that one gets sprinkled into some yogurt in the morning. Resveratrol has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that protect you against diseases like cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. The anti-inflammatory effects of resveratrol make it a good remedy for arthritis and skin inflammation. It also has antibacterial and antifungal properties that help treat infections of the urinary and digestive tracts. Dr. Sinclair says that taking supplements has preserved his family's health. Uh, so I, I've been taking supplements for and experimenting on myself for about 20 years. Uh, and my father has also been doing it. He's now 83 and, and in perfect health. So just by increasing vitamin and mineral intake, you can decrease inflammation levels in the body and increase longevity but you need to take the high quality multivitamins to experience the full effect. How do you know which ones are high quality? You should be advised to take it twice a day. It is not possible for just one pill to pack all the necessary micronutrients. The next under-recognized source of inflammation is number four, poor oral hygiene. Incredibly important and increasingly recognized to play a big role in both chronic inflammation and heart attack risk. You should have good oral hygiene. Remember, gum inflammation leads to inflammation in your entire body. Clean out your inflamed gums. Get rid of periodontitis. Brush your teeth twice a day. Get them checked by your dentist but don't fall in unhealthy love with yourself. Studies show that hedonism can be a major source of chronic inflammation. Dr. Sinclair himself lives by his grandmother's advice. She said, David, do what you can to make this world a better place. Make sure that you leave this place better than you found it, and that's what I'm trying to do. People who only focus on their desires and indulge in hedonic pleasure tend to have more pro-inflammatory genes. But if you're someone who likes helping out others and caring for the community, you focus on eudaimonic activities, and you are likely to have anti-inflammatory gene patterns. Doctor also emphasizes having strong communal bonds. If you're healthy and happy and have friends, uh, you'll never want to die. It also reduces stress and loneliness, which can cause inflammation. So if you want to live over 100 years, start giving back to the community. This keeps you active and will help you avoid the next source of inflammation. Three, sedentary lifestyle. An inactive lifestyle leads to a higher inflammation level. The amount of time you sit in a chair directly feeds your CRP. Take 30 to 60 minutes out of your day and do some medium level exercise or gentle activities. An active lifestyle, at first, will lead to a spike in acute inflammation. Once you let your body heal, it will start adapting to your more active lifestyle like it did for Dr. Sinclair's 80-year-old father. I wouldn't say he looks young, but his fitness is like a 30-year-old. and not Really? Kidding. He's stronger than me. We tested it out in the gym the other day. No way. That's embarrassing. He can lift more. He's fitter. We were going across the Serengeti. And uh, he was leading the charge. If you saw him, if you didn't see his face because he's, he's got gray hair and whatever, physically, uh, he put a bag on his head. You'd, just, you'd say he's 30 the way he moves. Well, he's, he's reinvigorated in life. Dr. Sinclair states that you should exercise until you're out of breath. Breath. You want to be able to be moving so fast that you cannot carry out a conversation easily. It makes you hypoxic and low in oxygen. This can be a good stimulant for your body as you build muscle and get a better blood flow. Your body's tissues begin to release chemicals that slow aging. In the long run, your inflammation levels start to fall, especially if you spend time in nature. Research has found that high levels of air pollution can cause high levels of inflammation in your body. This inflammation spreads even more once you have these other risk factors. High blood pressure, old age, obesity, and diabetes. Even being unmarried can be a risk factor. Once all these risk factors begin to interact, 
your risk of an early demise increases. Spend as much time as you can in the fresh air. Take frequent trips to the countryside and away from the city air. It can do wonders for your health. It reduces stress levels and increases your chances of living over 100 years, especially if you combine it with getting rid of the number one cause of inflammation, smoking. The factors that are counter to uh, a longer, healthier life, smoking for sure. That's the worst. And the worst. The link between smoking and inflammation isn't simple. Smoking does increase oxidative stress and inflammation, but when people quit smoking, they tend to start eating more. Being overweight, as we've seen before, increases inflammation in your body. So is there a solution? If you quit smoking, well done, but try not to fight off hunger. Instead, eat well and eat healthy. This will keep your stomach happy, prevent weight, and reduce inflammation in your body. By avoiding these seven sources of inflammation, you increase your chances of living over 100